Next story is about to really turn things upside down, and that is the whole point. That's right. The Biomotion Lab at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, studies the human brain and how it processes incoming information. In their latest experiment, they set out to give the brain the ultimate topsy-turvy test. Professor Nico Troyer, along with his assistant Dorita, will be using these inversion goggles to turn a student's world upside down. Imagine if your incoming vision was flipped 24 hours a day. Come in, yeah, we're now going to be putting these goggles on you. Whoa. How would your brain react? Whoa. We can take a few steps. How's walking? Is that difficult? Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell which way I'm going. Minyan will spend nine straight days in this world. She'll have to completely relearn the world around her. It's hard to, uh, weird, it's upside down, so it's, it's really hard to tell, like, where I'm reaching. Here's how we see the world. An image is actually displayed on the back of our retina upside down, but the brain flips it upright. In the past, though, inversion studies have shown that the brain has the ability to readjust to an inverted world. But certain things, like faces, present a very difficult task for the brain. In these images, you can tell that something is strange about the face on the left, but it isn't until it's turned upright that you can really tell what's wrong. Dr. Troyer wants to know why our brain works this way. The interesting fact about this experiment is that we have no clue what's going to come out of it. Which means Minyan is in for a topsy-turvy nine days. Aside from learning to walk, Minyan's first task is to complete some lab tests looking at objects and faces upside down and right side up. And how about reading? It becomes, well, difficult. Harry was... Uh... But show her an upside down page, which is now right side up in her world, and things noticeably improve. Harry must have had more haircuts. Next task, heading off to the outside world. So we've given her a walking stick here. This is because we know that it's very important for her to sort of integrate her sense of touch with her newfound vision. Minyan will be wearing these goggles all day and night. She'll wear a blindfold to sleep. So Dorita will be keeping a 24-hour watch. They'll be staying at a renowned Kingston bed and breakfast and getting her to participate in a host of activities. We want to promote her adaptation as much as we can by getting her an opportunity to do a lot of hand-eye activities. Hello. You recognize these people in front of you? Starting with eating. And the first meal of barbecue at Professor Troye's home is wrought with challenges for Minyan. You can do it. I recommend we try the uh, knife last. And the first physical activity proves to be even more of a test. I'm going to give you this. So where's the hole? Now. So you want? Uh, that is way off. Okay, now I'm just confused. Oh, I hit someone. I don't see the ball at all. You're walking into me. I okay, that's not going to work. Hand-eye coordination doesn't seem to be as much of a problem as self-orientation. She seems to be having a lot of trouble um, reorienting herself after every shot. She's also losing a sense of the direction that she should be heading. We keep reminding her to have a look around whenever you shift your body uh, further up front in front of you so that you can see more of the visual scene, so you can see where the course is. So the first 24 hours was challenging indeed. It seems the key to forcing her to adjust to this upside down world is to make sure she's not relying merely on memory. One way to um, force her to reintegrate her senses is to have her, as much as possible, do activities where her hand's right in front of her so she can see as much as possible. And it seems to be working. I'm surprised by the difference, like, not even a day makes. Like, I could, you know, put jam on my bread. I don't think I would have been able to do that y yesterday, definitely not. Things get even better over the next few days. Minyan's doing everything from bowling, to pottery, dancing, and even rock climbing. And somewhere along the way, her brain's been hard at work starting to figure out this new world where up is down and down is up. You ready to come down? I feel much better now. I mean, I can walk by myself without my cane and doing things with my hand has become a lot more comfortable. I'm still seeing things the same way as before, but it feels more right to me. So I can still tell that uh, people's feet are still like on top of their head, but to me that feels normal now. 
what we're seeing is that she's now getting used to her inverted world. She's retuning her sense of her motor skills and her sense of proprioception with her new vision. Even things like sound localization. So for example, when she first had her goggles on, what she heard coming from maybe down here, she was seeing up here. So I think now she's just getting used to having um, these two senses indicate one particular location for her. Well, remember, if you fall, we're going to call emergency 611. Okay. 611. And if there was any doubt about Min Yan's adaptation, the proof is in the peddling. Riding a bike is clearly not an activity that can be done solely on memory. Min Yan is, in fact, relying on her new visual cues. Okay. <laughs> After nine days, Kingston was head over heels about Min Yan and the BioMotion Lab experiment we'd get this wow reaction from the community. And I think to explain to them the science behind it and the fun we're having with it, I think um, is a great contribution back to the community. I was really surprised to get this many you know, attention from the media and the community. And this definitely has been a really great experience for me. It's almost time to remove the goggles. First, some final lab tests. And the results are pretty clear. After nine days, her brain definitely adjusted enough to give her body the proper motor commands to live in this topsy-turvy world. But her facial recognition tests didn't show much of a change. Upside-down faces were still difficult for her to recognize. For the perception of faces, it could well be that it's something innate that it cannot be easily changed. So that face recognition apparently is pretty much hardwired into the brain. Finally, time to turn Min Yan's world right side up once again. Oh, wow, this is weird. Okay. Whoa, peripheral vision is weird. <laughs> do you still recognize me? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Maybe try to stand up. And... Yeah, you can actually be fine. Yeah. Are you fine? Yes, I think so. Yes. It's weird seeing my hand this way. Uh -huh. Dr. Troye's conclusions? Our brain is highly adaptive and does anything it can to make the world normal for us. But in the end, there are still some hardwired realities that might never change. Low five. Oh, should be high five. Uh, oh, high five. High five. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's amazing, right? When you think of what we consider normal perception in a way. And I remember reading one time about these uh, Mbutu pygmies who live in the dense forests in, in the Congo. And the very first time they left the forest, they saw these buffalo in the distance. And they said to their driver, mm -hmm. you know, what insects are those? As they were driving, they, they were really getting quite scared because the buffalo were turning into insects. Wow. And the insects were turning into buffalo, right? Because they didn't have that sense, sense of depth perception. Amazing. Well, I wonder how long it took for her to get back to normal after she took these off. I mean, it took a while to get used to them, but how long did it take when she took them off? Probably, I don't know, maybe a few hours. I imagine she must have been quite dizzy. dizzy.